watching my videos, you saw some of my electrical and my no starts. One of my projects was my Yamaha, the AT2, the Enduro, and somebody was asking me about some of the electrical circuits, and I decided to uh, do a tutorial on basic wiring and starter circuits. This will be a sm uh, one video. This will be one video in a series helping to explain electrical and how it works. Electrical systems are actually really basic circuits. They tend to look a lot more confusing when you get a lot of components together, throwing computers and some other stuff. Um, get a lot of different colors, a lot of different thicknesses, and it can be daunting trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to break it down into really simple bite-sized pieces so that you can understand and help uh, use this information to help diagnose some of your problems. We did a video on a Honda VTX and it was a uh, no start, a note crank no start. When we got into the switch, the thumb switch on the handlebars, we found out that the contacts had a lot of dirt and debris in there. We cleaned them up and the bike ended up cranking no problem. We're going to explain that circuit in a simplified sense in a way that applies to most motorcycles and most cars out there. In a starting circuit, it works very similar to that of a flashlight. If you have your flashlight, when you hit the button, light comes out. How that works is really simple. You've got inside the battery, you've got three simple components. You've got a battery, you have the light bulb, and you have a switch. When you hook everything up as far as wiring, you'll find that with the positive side of the battery, it goes out into a switch. That same positive wire goes to the center of the bulb and that's half your circuit. Right now if you hit the switch you'd be able to put positive voltage to the bulb but nothing would happen yet because you need one other thing to complete the circuit and that's your ground. The metal case inside the tubing of the flashlight provides your, it provides your ground. In a simple sense, you go from the base, which is separate from the center of the bulb, out to the negative side of the battery. That's what completes your circuit. Once you hit this switch, power will run from the positive part of the battery through the switch into the bulb. It'll go through the filament and outside the base back over to the negative side of the battery. That's pretty much how a starter circuit works. Now t let's take that same principle and put it towards your starter circuit. Ultimately there's only two things you need. You need your battery and your starter motor. If you put power from your positive to the lead on the starter and you complete that ground circuit back here, that starter motor will actually spin. Only problem with that is we don't want the starter on all the time. Only in addition to the battery and the starter, so we have more control of the circuit. We have a solenoid. We'll also have your push button switch. Ultimately, if you use the battery, the switch, and the starter, you've got the same circuit that we did with the flashlight circuit. You have power coming from here to the switch, and the switch would run to the starter. The ground will complete the circuit. When you look at the design as far as the starter circuit, there's two things going on. When the starter, or with the starter, you'll have a heavier battery cable going to it because it requires a lot more power to turn it over and crank a, a motor over. The push button switch, they run that as a different circuit, and I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, they use a lighter gauge wire because all that's going to do is actually power a solenoid requiring a lot less power. What it is, is a side circuit um, deciding on when you're going to put actual true battery voltage from the battery to the starter. Simple circuit, as far as your starter, would look something like this. From the positive of the battery, you go down and you would hook it up to one side of the solenoid. You can see in here, there's a little disc in here. When you put power to it through this switch, this little disc makes connection with these two contacts 
allowing power to come through from the battery to this lead across and then take direct battery voltage through a thick wire to the starter. And that's the positive side of the circuit. Of course then, you take the case, the frame, any metal on there, ground, that would complete the negative side of it. So, from the case, that circuit would be complete. All you need to do is be able to activate this solenoid to get that starter going. If you ever notice that push button starter on your motorcycle, you might see two little tiny wires coming out of it. The reason they're tiny is they don't require much power to operate this solenoid. It's a little set of windings inside here that creates a magnetic field. When you put power here, it just pushes that plunger up to make the connection. You might see something like this on most cars and most bikes. Power will again come from here on a separate wire. Come down and this will go to your push button switch. This switch in turn will complete a circuit going to the positive lead of your solenoid. And that's your positive side of your starting circuit um, or your starter solenoid circuit. Just like the starter motor, the solenoid itself will get a ground. That's how it looks. Power will go through here, it'll come through here, it'll go to the frame, and the frame, being that circuit, will, the frame being that negative side of the circuit, will allow voltage to flow back through operating that solenoid. I hope this answered some of your questions as far as basic electronics, basic electrical work, and starting circuits. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. I'm looking forward to bringing out more tutorials for you, and you can look at all my other videos dealing with old dirt bikes, dirt bike restoration, repairs, diagnostics. Uh, I've got a couple car repair videos on there. Um, any comments or anything, feel free to share. If you've got a project that you're working on, feel free to tell us about it. Thank you for watching, and if you find these videos helpful, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching.